Primal branding is about connection. It helps you connect in some way to the content creator. All the stuff that Ryan did in the Penny series, I loved waiting for. Whenever he slapped the burrito. Oh, yeah. Whenever he went and <laughs> drank the iced coffee and had the slipping sound, they were all rituals I expect. I expected him to go to McDonald's almost every single episode, and it was a ritual just going in there. How do I actionably get these into my videos? If you wouldn't say it in real life, maybe don't say it in your videos. <laughs> How do we find language that, that your audience is going to speak back to you? Hey, welcome to the Video Creators Podcast presented by vidIQ. You know how you put a lot of time and energy into your YouTube channel for not nearly enough growth? Yep, we get it. We are here today to help you change that. Hello creators, how are you guys? Welcome back to another Video Creators Podcast brought to you by vidIQ. Today I'm hanging out with Blake and Ingrid. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing well. I heard uh, Ingrid's having some more troubles in the garden lately though. I was curious to ask you about that. We started the conversation beforehand and it got a little bit uh, emotional. Uh, I got a little so heated. The, uh, we, need, <laughs> we need a caterpillar update. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw I saw one of them inching across my patio this morning. He did not make it. I flung him into the woods. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was alive. <laughs> was, was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I I don't know. It's the black thumb, right? Part of it. It makes me kind of scared <laughs> for whether or not these are all going to survive. The garden's a little out of control. I have to cut some things back. I definitely know some areas where I went wrong and. How I'm going to tweak it going forward, but I've lost half my lavender plants. So I had 27 Ugh. and half are gone. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I think it's the heat, even though I've been very diligent at watering and I just, the black thumb, I'm really sad. The black thumb. <laughs> I'm really sad. All right, guys. So <laughs> I feel like we've referenced primal branding a lot of times in the podcast, but I don't think we've ever actually done an episode really breaking it down and how a lot of successful creators use it and just what it is exactly. So I guess maybe we could start there. Like what, if you were to just kind of give the cliff notes version, what what exactly is primal branding? It's a great question. Yeah, for me, uh, primal branding, I, use one of, I always try to tell clients, I, I kind of, the way I kind of present it is like, it's something tangible for the audience to latch onto and be involved with that allows them to participate in being part of the community. If that makes sense. Mm. Mm. So they're like, there's, there's phrases, there's language we use, there's <laughs> images to grab onto. It's all the things that encapsulate the entire brand, but that I can like any sports team, you know, we wear the jerseys, we know the chance, we know the insider language. It's, it's those things that I can tangibly say belong to something. For me, I feel like a real, if you were to put this on a real stupid, simple level, right? Primal branding is about connection. That's what I think it does. It helps the viewer or audience, whether it's you're in the audience listening to this or watching on YouTube, um, it helps you connect in some way to the content creator yeah. or brand. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And I think a lot of times when I'm talking about primal branding with a creator, it feels a little conceptual, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you know, connection. Okay, great. But like tactically, what does that mean? Like how, how does that work? I guess if a creator asked you guys that, you know, how would you answer that? Well, I think before we even do go down that path, Sam, you need to even define for the audience, like where did primal branding even come from? Yep. That's probably a good idea. The, the origin of, of primal branding. So basically what, so primal branding is a book. It's a, it's a book by an author, Patrick Hanlon. And he basically, I think he wrote this back in the nineties, but he basically was identifying, you know, there are these massive companies that have these cult like die hard followings. Like what are they doing different? What is Apple doing? What is McDonald's doing? What is Starbucks doing differently from some of these other companies that is causing like these raving fans or, or customers. And so he basically identified these seven, he, he calls them primal branding elements uh, that these brands have woven in and integrated into their kind of brand strategy. And so we found that was with YouTube, it totally translate, translates it. You know, as a, as a creator, you can weave in these primal branding elements and uh, it kind of has the same effect. You know, your viewers really become connected to you and it becomes kind of this loyal fan base in this community uh, a, a lot quicker and a lot more easily. I It was such a fascinating book and such a fascinating concept to me the very first time that I ever heard Tim talk about it. 
And I had the opportunity to listen to Patrick uh, in a community thing that Tim had actually uh, uh, created a few years back. And it was just, it's just really fascinating that on YouTube, there are a lot of creators who don't necessarily intentionally, I think, um, dip into the seven different elements, but they just naturally do them. And it's so easily definable when you know what it is. The more you watch YouTube, you're going to be like, oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, I understand this. Yeah, it's kind That's of like storytelling. This, 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 right? You I can't like, unsee it. I know. It's yeah. kind of like ruined movies for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the same time, yeah, you see it everywhere now. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that was problem branding. That was problem branding. Yeah. So, yeah. I would love for us to, in this, even this conversation today, um, I would love for us to make this super practical even for people. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. maybe we can start by making it practical by jumping into maybe the first one. You know, what is the what is the first primal branding element? This one's this one's my favorite. I think out, out of all of them, and that's the creation story. And I think because as somebody who loves superheroes and and all the that comic book stuff is the thing that I kind of draw to the most when it comes to those characters, and that's like the, their what I would call your origin story, where you came from. Um, anytime I think of Spider-Man, I always think about like he was a you know a n- bit of a nerdy guy who got bitten on the wrist, but the hand by a radioactive spider. Now his powers navigated, lost his uncle. Like the whole story creates like what he is now. Without these events, there's no what we know as Spider-Man now. Too same with Batman losing both his parents. All these are are sh- like the, who you are now is the product of what you went through. Same with when I think of like these stories of Steve Jobs and Apple. Like he started mm-hmm. in his garage, like that. That story is so famous, and has it has the company has so much more meaning about it too. I think I believe in Starbucks. Like he was homeless when he when he came up with the idea for that too, right? So the concept oh, wow. of that, I never knew that. I'm I didn't sure know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. <laughs> wow. So that concept of knowing that you now adds so much more value to what the product is now because of where it came from. Mm-hmm. And uh, interesting for me, that's always been like the coolest part for any client that I worked with. When I hear their creation story or their origin story, I'm like, I feel like I know you so much more now. I understand why you're doing what you do so much more now. And I see the value because of what you went through to get to where you are now. Well, and like, even think of Tim, right? Um, you think of his creation story, how he was dating this girl, right? And mm-hmm. uh, wanted to send, wanted to introduce her to his family so that they could get to know that her and him, their relationship a little bit better. Um, but the files were too big to send by email. Right. He did a little research, stumbled upon YouTube and started uploading videos. And then before he knew it, Cat Licker 77 was watching <laughs> and he didn't understand why. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> then all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's understanding YouTube and, and then he's explaining YouTube to his to his friends because he's starting to break it down. And before you know it, then it's a business. But it all started with just wanting his family to get to know his girlfriend. Yeah. It's a I think cool connection point, right? If I, if I were to try to put like a word to what does the creation story do, I feel like it's it all comes down to relatability. Like even Spider-Man, like if you were to, to watch mm-hmm. a Spider-Man movie and all it is is, okay, he's swinging and he's saving the town and that's kind of it. That's all you ever see mm-hmm. into his life or kind of that's as far as as far back as the curtain goes, um, you know, it's cool. It's entertaining, but it adds so much more relatability to know that he was just an ordinary guy and then he was bit. And then this is his story and this is how he got to become a superhero. You know, you can relate so much more to that. Yeah. And you know, what's funny about that idea too with Spider-Man as like, and, and I'm going down on a tangent here, but like the, where he came from, Stanley wanted to have him relatable as a regular guy going through regular things. Everyone told him it was going to be a flop. Like it was, it would not work because nobody cares about what you do in the background. So for me, that was like the one time I saw like a proven concept, but everyone was against it. Like, Hey, this actually has a bigger impact than we realize having these characters have a backstory that develops them to where they are. People relate to that. And I think that's why you see that so much more now in movies and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's interesting too. Cause you hear, and maybe this will cause a war in the comments for the listeners. Maybe, I don't know. But, you know, I, you, you hear that a lot of people's least favorite superhero is Superman because he is very unrelatable because he's got yeah. way too many like invincible powers. And we know, it, 
you know, except yeah. Kry- Kryptonite, of course, we know there's there's a weakness there. He's but gonna win. You know? <laughs> yeah, but there is that like relatability is missing to the point where, you know, consumers who are reading the comments or, or reading the comics or watching the movies uh, actually dislike like that that superhero because yeah. they can't relate in the same way. I guess you would only really be able to relate to him though. When you think of him as like, he wasn't really abandoned. He was saved kind of sent away. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But think about it and then adopted. Yep. So that was the human part to try to make that relatable in his creation story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, funny enough, I feel like just as being humans, we're always fascinated at where things come from. Like everyone always asks the question, like, you know, how do we get, how do we get here as humans? Where, where did that story start? Mm-hmm. So naturally people are drawn to those sorts of things too. So it seems like a no brainer. A lot of times that like, it's something to share that people gravitate towards. And I could ask any, I've asked a ton of, ton of creators, like, tell me about your favorite creator, what do you know about them? And they can tell me the mm-hmm. entire origin story off the bat. Yeah. I'm like, see, it means a lot more to you than you realize. You think about think about creators, big creators like Jimmy, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Everybody knows his story, right? You all know that he published, I don't even know how many videos, probably close to a thousand videos, hundreds of videos before he ever had anything hit. Mm-hmm. We all know that story, right? And, and it makes every creator feel like that's them because that's their story too on the yeah. platform yeah well i guess even you know just to, to ask you guys like if a creator were to ask okay i get it like i get the creation story but like tangibly how do i incorporate that into my content you know what does that look like mm. what would you guys well, say I, I love that question i think there's a couple really great ways to incorporate that a, I would make a video that's dedicated to it for sure. And that's what we call a community video because <laughs> it's, especially if you're like a how-to channel, this is going to be a little bit, a little bit different. I just saw a channel do, oh, Graham Stephan just did a, a more community style video, oh, for, cool. which is not something that you <laughs> usually see. See, even big creators that have millions and millions of <laughs> millions of subscribers even make community content. Uh, you have no excuse if you're listening in the audience and you're like, oh, I don't want to do community content. Your creation story is your story. You know that story. That should be one that you could bef- definitely make. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You and guys remember the, the draw about, my life era? The, yeah, exactly. And it's not about going really, really big. It's about connecting mm-hmm. to your audience. Yeah. So that's one way for sure. Yeah. For me, the, I, mean, I, I I always tell people the trailer, if you're going to make, I, I always mm-hmm. encourage a trailer for someone for their channel. Again, I always get the pushback. Yeah, me like, too. Well, these, these big people don't like these big channels don't do it. I'm like, I know. I think it's a missed opportunity. I think it's a fun exercise to do in just in general, but like it being one of the first videos they see when they land on your channel to immediately hear your stories. Like we can get that connection as fast as possible. And it's the easiest place to slide it in. There are big channels that have trailers. There are some, yeah, there definitely is. But I get, <laughs> there are people, again, I, I get, I feel like everyone could benefit from it at some point. And totally. uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely encourage it. Yeah. I like yeah. to think of creation story as like a pretty broad thing you can integrate like like i think some creators and maybe if you're listening and you feel like some tension in your chest it can feel kind of intimidating to make a video telling your story and you know this Mm -hmm. was an exercise back when we were doing the video labs program where people would jump in and share their stories and it's this like emotional thing it's kind of tough it's hard to uh to fit that into a video and so i like to explain creation story like it can be as big as a whole dedicated video telling your story but it could be as small as like a little short anecdote of things that have happened in your life like i would even say blake when you'd said um kind of growing up being into superheroes and things like that like that's a short little peek behind the curtain that's a small part of your creation story that uh it's not your whole story of how you came to be today and everything but Mm. in a sentence that is kind of related to the topic of what we're talking about today we were able to connect with you that much more um so i think it could be even as small as that create some of those small little connection points too. I feel too, you don't always, well, maybe I'll ask you guys this rather than giving my thoughts here right away. Um, do you feel like a creation story? Like what's the shortest creation story you could tell? <laughs> That's, That's a good, good question. question. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'm trying to think the shortest one possible. 
I mean, like, does it always have to be a big video or be a trailer? Um, well, I'm almost like you don't even have to use words. Like sometimes the whole picture is oh. worth a thousand words is so true. Like maybe mm-hmm. you're just delivering the content for your video and you have footage of, you know, Sam from 10 years ago that you're incorporating as B-roll as you're talking over it. You know, that's a form of a creation story without even speaking to it. Yeah, I feel like you can because I've had I've had clients do this very well, actually, just kind of dip into their creation story a little bit. Uh, You know, just like a one liner at some point in the video. Um, And that just really kind of helps to establish, you know, where you came from. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Well, creation story to me sometimes feels like kind of the the big, that can be really broad and, and, and kind of a big thing to try to tackle. But um, you know, maybe moving into the next primal branding element, this is going to be a, a creed. I think these are a bit more, it feels a bit more tangible, a little bit easier to, to integrate. Um, so yeah, how would you, how would you unpack what a creed is? I think from, well, if we were to kind of even tackle the idea where the creed comes from, I think, first of all, starting with your value proposition for your channel first, what is, what is the value of your channel you're trying to portray? And then making sure that what your creed is aligns to that. And essentially what a creed would be is just a belief. I think, I think the, the language like creed is a little bit kind of foreign sometimes too. I try to explain it. It's just a belief you have. It's like something you say mm-hmm. um, that you believe about something. So um, like I could say, you know, I could have a channel about cooking and I could say, you know, I believe every meal deserves to be eaten the family. Right. And that's just a belief that I have that can be shared with people within the audience. But having those beliefs that you share with people is what they can hold on to those short phrases and say, yeah, I also believe that as well, too. I also believe that as well, too. Or I don't believe that. And we can get into a bit more about that later on as well. But I feel like sometimes the creed stumps creators. Oh, yeah. All which is which is actually a little surprising because yeah. these are like the things that you really lean into that you everybody that starts a channel believes something. Mm-hmm. And you're starting a channel for a certain reason. Um, and if you're struggling, you know, kind of defining that, then maybe look at what you stand against. Because mm. when you stand against something, you believe something. Yeah. Right? Totally. I think a, a big misconception, this, I'm actually, I'm curious if this happens to you guys too, but a lot of creators I talk to about creeds, they will, they will give me, like a value proposition statement, like a what and a why, like, well, I do this so I can help you with this. And I think they're, yeah, it's like, well, that's awesome. But like, (laughs) what do you believe? And maybe that feels kind of intimidating too. And, you know, I think it can be helpful to remember. It doesn't have to be this super deep, like, you know, something you hold super dearly. It can, and those actually tend to be better, but it can be something as, you know, small or goofy, you know, if I were to say like, I believe that Superman is the best superhero, there would be people who immediately feel something like either. Yes, I agree with you. And I believe that too. Or are you Mm -hmm. kidding me? You know, he's the worst because this is and this. Um, So even something like that, just the same as if you were to say, I do not believe that Superman is the best, right. Then all of a sudden you have people are ready to ready to play. Yeah. Um, but you asked an interesting question. And I think that when people give you that value proposition in return, if that's, if when you're thinking creed and that's kind of what you start to say, I would then ask yourself why, because the why is really how you really feel about it. Cause creeds are really, I, they're all about feeling right. And connecting, yeah. connecting to other people. Definitely. I think even if this feels like something you've never thought about before, this can actually be really helpful for, for your channel, even like maybe with your value proposition, getting to some deeper level, because let's say just for example, maybe you have like a finance channel and the kind of the buck stops at, well, I'm just going to help you earn a lot more money. And then that's kind of it. And so if there isn't a why, or if there are no creeds behind that, like that's yeah, you and a thousand other people kind of all do the same thing. Like what's going to set you apart? Yeah. How is somebody going to connect with you? Like, like as a human being. And, and, it, and let's use that example. I'm going to help you earn, earn more money. Right. 
and the creed is really more because everybody deserves to live a little bit of more freely on their yeah. own terms. Yeah. Right? It's, and it's, that's, that's that belief. It's yeah. funny to me how many creators that I've worked with and we're working through the creeds and they'll tell me the value proposition. Even right now, as we're doing coaching, tell me the value proposition, thinking it's a creed. And as they're explaining it, they're just telling me creeds without even realizing, like, I don't know what the creed is, but you know, and they start going through the list of even problem branding itself. And they'll, they'll just say these phrases that I'm making notes of like, that's a creed, that's a creed, that's a creed. Yeah. And they do it all the time. Cause it's as easy as like, you know, talking to a person who could say like, you know, I just believe, you know, I believe everyone deserves to be happy. You know, that's, that's a simple belief in itself. Right. And they'll say that, or they have things they tell their audience, like, you know, you deserve to have a smile today. Like I try, I try to end, end off my videos that way too. And it's like, well, that's a creed in itself too. So you, you odds are you're saying things that are creeds. You just don't realize it. And, um, yeah, it just it, same idea. Like when you tell that, you know, I, I want you to make more money. Just ask, yeah, ask yourself why. Because what are we trying to accomplish through that? Why do I want to make more money? Because I want to feel like I can, you know, everyone deserves to be able to take a break from financial stress. You know, it's as simple as that. There's a deeper why to it. Did I tell you guys about the suspenders creed? I feel like Many I may times. have talked about again. that before. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Tell it again. It's really sorry. It was uh, like a men's clothing channel that I worked with for kind of a longer term basis. And um, it, it wasn't like a fashion channel. It was more kind of geared towards guys who kind of worked in the trades. So like, you know, more um, durable clothing, things that are going to kind of help you do your job better. And so he had this really strong creed around suspenders and he put it in a video and it was just like yeah i just believe suspenders they're just like the most efficient piece of clothing because they help you in this way and this way and um it was just funny to see even in the comments uh his viewers shared the same belief like yes finally somebody's talking about suspenders you know it can it doesn't have to be super super deep it can be something kind of goofy or like surface level too but you're you'll get people who share that belief with you or, or don't. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's a good segue to kind of jump from, from the creed. Uh, another primal branding element is the non-believer, you know, it's like you said before, Ingrid, it's like knowing what you stand mm -hmm. for, but also knowing what you don't stand for. How would you guys unpack the, the non-believer primal branding element? Well, I mean, really it's people that it's funny because non-believers, everybody's afraid of haters. And they, I think they confuse haters with non-believers. Because I think a true hater has a different intention. Non-believers are still a part of your community. They're still interested in what you have to say. They just don't necessarily align completely with your beliefs. But that doesn't mean that they're still not interested. Does that make sense when I say that? Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. I think, a po I think a politics a little bit. Yeah, here. that's where my mom was going to. Right. Yeah. 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 I was even thinking like if we were going to use the finance channel again, <laughs> let's say there's a creed that's like, I believe the best way to spend your money or let's say that I believe the best way uh, or the best use of financial freedom is to spend more time with your kids and your family. And there's probably people out there who don't, don't want kids and that's just not a high value for them. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And it's like, they yeah. have a different view of how they would like to use financial freedom or uh, achieve that in their life. And they would be a non-believer. That's not a hater, but it, there is a separation where they could probably see that and feel like, yeah, this isn't the right channel for me. I'm going to be on yeah. my way. Mm -hmm. And that, that's actually a good thing. Same with uh, Dave Ramsey as well, too, believes that you shouldn't have credit yeah. cards, you know, and then there's yeah. like Howard, Kiyos Howard Kiyosaki, I can't remember his last name, right? But I believe he believes in using them and like as yeah. like an elevated. So like two different beliefs there. I, and the re the thing I want to say too is like, you know, the best leaders that have that 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 are the strongest know what they stand for, but also know what they stand against. Anytime you're kind of like on this fence of like trying to please everybody, is when people lose trust in you, right? And that's the same when it comes to politics. Try to try to trust a politician who's trying to cover all the bases rather than saying I stand for this specifically and not this. That's when it gets harder to you know, say. How, why should I vote for you at that point, right? Yeah, I would even say there is a benefit to this, like algorithmically too, because, you know, the algorithm is really, its whole job is just looking to surface the right video to the right person at the right time. And so if you, there isn't really anything that you take a stand for or, or believe in, mm -hmm. or at least like vocalize to your audience and you, you know, let's just look, down the road, you end up with this sort of mixed audience, like a lot of different types of people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you upload that next video, 
and YouTube is making that decision of, okay, what type of person am I going to surface this to? Um, it's going to add some confusion to that and it, it may not help you in the long run. So it actually can, it can be beneficial to be a little polarizing and that's not us encouraging you to go like make enemies <laughs> and go be polarizing just for the sake of it. But um, if you can make it clear, some of your creeds and some of the things you stand for and can make that distinction for the people who are not the right viewer, uh, you know, that can actually have a really good impact for your channel long-term too. And if, if after all of this, you still don't really, you can't think about what your beliefs are, what you stand against, ask the people closest to you, ask your family, ask the people you work with, because chances are <laughs> they know because <laughs> you've said it, you've leaned into it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So primal branding element number four, the icon. Mm. What is the icon? I feel like people stumble on this one too sometimes. Like, I don't know any icons. I'm like, that can be as simple as just either your, your logo if you have one. It could be... A, Casey like, Neistat's sunglasses. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Ray bands. You know, I was going to say like the glasses you wear, um, mm -hmm. like but the shirt you wear, it can be the... I, like for me, I have the same backdrop every week. That's an icon in itself that you expect to see. If I change my background one day, you're going to be like, where is Blake? What's going on? Kind of thing. And it can be as simple as that. So... Um, it's just, you know, I don't say, I'm not physical, but like, um, I don't know, visual things that you're constantly going to connect to that draws you back. That's why every brand is a logo, a mascot even as well too. It, the idea is to see something even on the outside world. If I go out and see a mermaid, I'm going to think of Starbucks for some reason because that's where I picture that. Yeah. Well, they really engage all the senses. It's mm -hmm. not... It's not just your logo. And I think that that's a trap that creators fall into. They just think about logos, but it's really about the images or pictures or things um, or, or sounds even, or, you know, if you're true. a cook, maybe it's that's a true. smell or something that instantly signal who you are instantly. Right. Yes, and the that's Ryan Trahan theme song. Right. Yeah, and I think of the Casey's sunglasses, right? Oh, like Jaws. So, yeah. yeah yep. Iconic. Yeah. Now, if you're really good, you pair a creation story with that icon. Because mm. icons can have creation stories. Yeah. There was the, uh, the airline pilot who um, had the stuffed animal. What was it named? It was named Bubbles, I think. Um, so this air, airline pilot had... Do you guys not know this story? What show, what no. shows did you watch? So, no, I have this no is a, idea what you're okay, talking about. So this is a YouTube channel, <laughs> and I, I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the channel. But this is, is a on YouTube kids. Is that what you're watching? No, <laughs> <laughs> this is a YouTube channel. It's an airline pilot. Uh, is is the leader of this channel, and so um, he has this little stuffed animal that he will strap into the passenger seat on his flights representing his daughter because he wants to bring his daughter with him, but he can't, she can't fly with him. And so that is an icon that is in his videos. You know, there's bubbles strapped Aww. in the seat, kind of representing See, his daughter. And there's connected. a creation story. story. Yeah, there's a story <laughs> behind it. That's, I think, the whole point though, right? Is to help people feel connected in some way, whether it's a silly little thing or not. Right, right. I even think of uh, Tim's hat as an icon, mm -hmm. like he will join meetings He's with us sometimes. He's always said it's weak. He's without, always said it's a weak icon. <laughs> really? I always think it's strong because yeah. he will join sometimes with no hat on and it's like, it's this weird. is weird. Yeah. Like it's I'm just, weird. it's weird. It's it would weird. be like, you know, if you had a big beard and then you shaved it one day, it's like, this is weird. Something. It's are jarring. You, yeah. Are you okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we feel instantly connected to icons. So it's not just your set, it's all sorts of things. Um, yeah, so I would encourage I would encourage creators to have a little fun here. Yeah. And then if you can get a creation story to that too, that's even better, right? Yeah. Well, and it's cool how some of these kind of like intertwine too. Like I would even say yeah. an icon, it, it can tie in a creation story, but I think it can also tie in a ritual, which is going to be the next mm -hmm. primal branding element, you know, some sort of a recurring repeated thing. Like we talked about audio, like Ryan, the Ryan Trahan closing song is such an iconic song for Beast. every video of the, of the Penny series. Um, so you hear it and you immediately associate it with, with him. What are some other examples of, of rituals you guys have seen? 
One of my favorites, I've talked about this before too, is Peter McKinnon, but I, I, there's a really cool story here. He opened up, opened up so many videos with the famous, what's up, right? It's a fame. He does this with his hands. It doesn't even, it makes no sense. It's not, it's a made up word, right? He did an entire video just about the ritual because people oh. had been noticing that he hadn't been doing it. So he felt the need to make mm. a video to satisfy wow. the audience. And as an audience member, it was one of my favorite videos because it was just funny. It was like a silly video, but yet I so connect to his opening his videos that when he rolled an ATV over his hands and broke all his fingers and did this like with Blake and his cast, you know, <laughs> I immediately as an, as a community member said, dude, stop out loud. Because I was like, what are you doing? Clearly you're injured. Don't, I knew it was coming. Right, but there's a connection there over something silly, right? Made up language, ritual. Yep. Yeah, it kind of power. becomes it. Well, it becomes this thing that you kind of like expect. Like you, you grow to yeah. kind of love it and expect it, and then when it doesn't happen in a in a video, you're kind of like, mm -hmm. like, are you sick? Are you okay? Is something wrong? Yes. You know, it it's it's jarring. You know, similar to the icons too. Like it becomes this thing that your community kind of just grows to love and expect and know yeah there's a uh, creator austin evans tech channel and he used to mm -hmm. always start his videos off with hey guys or something i think it was something like that i and i vaguely this kind of came to mind i vaguely remember him because i'm not i would watch the channel a whole lot but i remember jumping into a single video and he addressed the fact that why he stopped saying it at the time because he slowly phased it out and i guess people in the comments were mentioning like why'd you stop and starting the video that way too so it's funny it's, again like as soon as you pull that out the repetition people like wonder why the heck you aren't doing it anymore so it can be the simplest thing that we don't even realize we're doing, but people love it every single time. All the stuff that Ryan did in the Penny series, I loved waiting for. Whenever he slapped the burrito, whenever he <laughs> yes. went and drank the iced coffee and had the slipping sound, they were all rituals that I expect. I expected him to go to McDonald's almost every single episode, and it was a ritual just going there. Yeah. You know, and that I always waited for it. So I always loved just the slapping of the burrito when he went to you know, <laughs> Chipotle and all that stuff, too. That was part of the rituals. So what would you say then to the audience here if they're if they were talking to you guys like in a room and you know but I don't really know how to start these off like how do I decide what's a ritual and how do I really implement that without it not feeling authentic mm. I'm glad that you brought this question up because I was just about to say <laughs> I think <laughs> these can sometimes like evoke this emotion of it. This feels kind of YouTube-y. This feels like inauthentic mm. to me. You know, I'm not a Peter McKinnon and I'm not going to do the like, what's up. That's just not me. That's not my personality. And so I think it's important to kind of reinforce that it shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Like, don't, don't do the Mr. Beast thing and, you know, yell if that's not you. Like, of course, if you're, if that's authentic and you're high energy and like, you know, do, do you. Um, so that's usually the first thing that I encourage, like don't overthink it, just be yourself, be authentic. And usually as far as like tangibly, how can we kind of get started with these? Cause I think a lot of times too, it's like, Oh well, yeah, there's a lot of primal branding elements. These all sound great, but like, how do I actionably get these into my videos? I always recommend just open a Google doc and just put all seven of these elements. And I know we haven't gotten through all seven just yet, but just write all of them down and just brain dump. Just whatever yeah. you can think mm -hmm. of, kind of word vomit, like just, just get it on the paper. And then from there you can, you know, take a look at it over time. And I also wouldn't try to do this all in one day, but if you look at this over time, you can begin to like, what are some things that really resonate with me? Maybe, maybe some, where, what are some creeds that I can think of? Um, you know, what are some just kind of rituals, you know, maybe it's goofy, maybe it's more of a serious thing. Um, some creation story things, you know, what can I just put on this piece of paper uh, so that the next time I'm filming and maybe I have my script up on my computer too, I can look at what I have written down and it feels so much easier to just, oh yeah, yeah this, this story would fit perfectly or this would be a great opportunity to just kind of organically weave in this creed that I have to this video. Um, so that's, that's usually the advice I'd give, but yeah, I'm curious what you guys say to creators. Yeah. Rituals can be even a lot of these primal branding elements in use as a ritual. So whether it be a creed or even an icon, like you mentioned, using the same music, if I'm using the same music, every single video, like Ryan was at the end of it, you know, that's a ritual in itself too. 
Um, you can even, you know, as long as we're doing it well, like have a call to action before to kind of extend our watch session or whatever we're trying to accomplish, end a video a certain way to signing off on a certain thing. And that can be at that point, we're, we're going to call to action, but just ending the video off saying, you know, you know, however you want to, everyone has their own way of doing it. And surprisingly, a lot of creators do have their own way of doing it, but doing it at that point, you can too. Um, yeah, that's some of the wings that things that I thought, thought of initially, but. It's funny because it, it, you were talking about music a second ago and you guys have both mentioned this. I was actually, so I'm going to say something a little opposite today. Ooh, <laughs> this is exciting. Know, right? You're getting ready. Yeah. Cause I feel like there's a danger. I don't, what I don't want the audience to hear is okay. So I'll just pick one track and that's going to be my track and I'm going to play it over and over and over again. Mm. And I'm going to put it at the end of my video. Because I'll be honest, you're just going to have loss if you do that. Um, Ryan's was part of a big challenge. It was part of a big series. It's become part of an iconic thing, if you will. Um, but I do think that there is a fine line, though, there about repeating something over and over again. Um, and then having it be too overtly noticeable. Where people mm. are like, okay, there's no more value here. I'm gone. True. Um, so what are your thoughts when I say something like that? Sorry. I hate my to first... be the voice of dissension here, but. No, this no, is good. I, yeah. we're, we're going my, opposite my, like, here. Reten my retention person inside is like, no, don't do that. <laughs> well, the, the question that comes to mind is, is it, is the, is the issue, I guess, the fact that it's at the end of the video? Like, could you have a repeating song somewhere else in the video? I think you can if it's, yeah, I think you can. I think having, you got to be careful sometimes with placement of stuff mm -hmm. like that. Wouldn't you say you guys have looked at enough retention graphs to know that? Oh, yes. Well, I would say, I would say if, if it's been used for a while as an ending part of it, I'm using it. It becomes ending sudden, language. They're going to think yeah. ending language too, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. I would ask, what's the intent of putting music here? So if it's, mm -hmm. well, the video is coming to a close, so I figured I should put some music Maybe yeah. we shouldn't do that, but I feel like right. Ryan's it, well, it, it, part of the series and even Mr. Beast, like it was made out of humor too, right? So it's yeah. like it's something not like just natural music, it's something that's meant to be comedy and evoke emotion at that point. So it's got a different spin to it that people stick around for. It can be yeah. part of it. Well, what was interesting, even with like the Ryan Trahan Penny series, is there were maybe, I mean, gosh, what do you think, like five, maybe six tracks? that were used in every yeah, video. And that's and another so, thing too. Like, yeah, don't just he would, one ritual pick me, right, right? Right, right. Right. Yeah. So even when it was like maybe a um, fast forward time lapse shot of him, do whatever he's doing to make money, mm -hmm. there was like a pretty iconic song that we heard like in every video during mm -hmm. that point of the video. Um, so that, that became kind of like this known thing too. Yeah. It's very interesting. There is though. a danger though. Yeah, you have to kind of, you have to find the line and you have to be able to move the story forward in a different way, I think, um, is really important. Uh, yeah. When I think of implementing rituals in videos, um, something you just said, Sam, what's the intent to? Um, it has to make sense. It can't just be done just to do it. You know, because then that's not really authentic. And why would I stay and watch? Right. So that's, it should come from a place of authenticity. It should come from a place of actually moving the story forward, the video forward in some way. Um, and then I would just have fun with it. If you wouldn't say it in real life, you know, maybe don't say it in your videos. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't> yeah. Know. <laughs> I mean, I, that, I think that goes for all of these, not just rituals. Like, I think the how, organically you can weave this into the video the better mm -hmm. you know it's be a good weird. word organic it'd be, yeah it'd be yeah. weird if you even like thinking of a creation story if it's like you know we're maybe we're filming this podcast I'm like by the way i was born in a hospital in florida on the you know february or rainy yeah. rainy morning you know it'd just be kind of weird and out of place and then we yeah. get right back into the right back into the content yeah. um, well hey let's 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 pull the curtain back on one of our rituals right because now the audience can never unsee this ever. <laughs> so sorry, but it's about, it's about the right video to the right person at the right time. Yep. Right. But we're very intentional with where we say that, but that is a ritualistic saying for us. And it is on our primal branding list, yep. <laughs> by the way. Yeah. It's kind of meta. <laughs> 
Yes. So that yeah. is that is one of ours. And you've heard us say it over and over again. And now every time we say it, you'll know why we're saying it. Because it is partly primal branding. But it is also something, this is something that you'll also recognize with rituals and sacred words, which I think we're going to get into in just a second. Your community will say it back to you. And that's where you know you have something. Right. Yeah. Well, right? even, I mean, that's a good segue. And because sacred words, yeah. that's going to be, so we've talked about five of these seven so far. So the sixth one, it's going to be our sacred words. And so with you just saying, you know, that, you know, how do we find language that, that your audience is going to speak back to you? This can look like creeds. This can look like rituals if you have a saying or something like that. But sacred words is a little bit different than those. You know, how, how would you guys mm-hmm. describe what that is? I'll be wow. honest, this, this is, a, this is a, a difficult one for a lot of creators. And sometimes I get yeah. stumped on it too. It's, it's one that feels yeah. a little bit more unnatural and um, can be a bit of a conversation to figure out what works. I use the examples a lot of times too of where, I, where I've seen it work well. And that can be, well, like, like, you know, not forcing it, but sometimes people have names for, for their, their, their creator, their audience. Um, like, you know, Good Mythical Morning called the Mythical Beasts or, mm-hmm. um, or, or I think of like even like Starbucks uses example, having their language is, you know, venti, grande tall which i think is weird but for them it makes sense right um but it can be a hard thing for a lot of creators to think through of what is something i can say that doesn't feel forced but i can use as a language within you know that audience so but i'm curious your guys' thoughts around creators you've worked with yeah i feel like in this one i wouldn't force a square into a round hole Mm -hmm. but just go with it lean into it and see if it clicks you can't, you can't mess this kind of stuff up. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, then switch, tweak, try something different. Give whatever any of these things are, try them numerous times. If you have people saying words that you're actually coming up with your own language, you probably have your own language. Most people do have that one or two words that they use. You know, on my, on my personal channel, I always, I always say, Hey chickies, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's just funny. I mean, you guys know every, I say chicky to everybody, but chicky is not a girl. I say it to guys too. Chicky is my definition of friend. Yeah. Or Ingrid's chickies. You heard it here first. (laughs) 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 Yes. But, but my audience responds to me that way. I have friends that actually greet me that way. It's just become part of my personal and actual channel language. So what is that for you? You know, a lot of people always have these made up words (laughs) that don't exist in a dictionary, right? And it doesn't have to be just that odd. It doesn't have to be a what's up type of thing. Yeah. Um, It could be like tall, grande, and venti, which are three words. They just have a specific meaning behind them. I was just about to say, and I was actually, I was going to frame it as a question. Like, does it have to be a made up word that you would not find in the dictionary or can it be a word that means something in context, but it means maybe something different within like the channels context. I feel like there's a, there's a reason for it and it can be a set of words. It doesn't have to be a word, right? My my question too, just out of curiosity, because I think of, Finding those words because you still want something specific to your your channel, but also if I'm thinking in terms of like maybe the niche that I'm in, if I'm talking about tech, if I use like the words only known by this community, like I could say RAM. Like we had a discussion in chat in the meeting yes. of the day about all these computer yeah. parts, and there was like three or four of us who knew exactly what was going on talking about all these computer parts, and everyone I was, was lost, like, I have completely no lost. <laughs> so could that itself be sacred language in a way too? Yes, yeah. it can be because it's insider language. It's like baseball language, yeah. right? Um, and that's the thing is, and that's the thing about the Starbucks language. So we'll go back to that example. And Tim, Tim used this. You guys, the audience has probably heard this before. You know, if Tim, Tim is not a coffee drinker. If he were to walk into Starbucks, he would order a, an order of coffee, which would be weird just on its own thing. He would probably order like a medium coffee. And me next to him would be like, it's not medium, right? It's grande. You're not one of us. And that is the point of lexicon. That's the point of sacred language. Mm -hmm. It's the insider language that those that know, know. It creates connection. (laughs) Yeah, you feel like you belong. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, there's a a Pokemon content creator I watch a lot who like plays a lot of the games and um, he'll do just kind of like playthroughs of the games. And so, you know, part of 
part of Pokemon is that there are these things called critical hits and it's totally random mm-hmm. when it happens. Mm-hmm. But if you get a critical hit, it does more damage and it can like, you know, beat your Pokemon. And the fact it's totally random is it just will <laughs> so always lost. seem to happen at the worst times. And so he has these, uh, it's kind of like a ritual, but it's also insider language where he has a little uh, voice board thing where he can turn on some mm, voice yeah. effects and things like that. And so whenever it happens, he like jumps up out of his chair and he turns on like this really kind of reverb crazy sound and he's like it's a crit and then you just see uh like in the live streams just the stream all caps it's a crit it's a crit it's a crit it's a crit um so it's totally become this like a lot of these wrapped into one it's like a ritual but it's also a uh, combined so much yeah you know there's a lot of these that, that work together that way too i would love for the audience to just actually tell us some of their favorite sacred language or rituals or any primal branding things that they can pick out from other channels in the comments. Right. Yeah. That's another one from us too. Podience. That's an entire language. That's true. Podience. There Podience. you go. Yeah. Good right. call. There's it one right there. Discussion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we had some kind of, maybe some creeds behind it too, back before when it was either the Podience or the pod, what, pod, pod squad? squad. Was that pod the other squad. option? Yes. Caitlin somewhere is like, it should be pod squad. She was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're leading this, Sam. Oh, no. <laughs> Great brain, had a brain fart. Okay. You're okay. the leader, Sam. You're the leader. Yes. You're the leader, Sam. <laughs> I am the leader. And speaking of the leader, we had talked about six primal branding elements, and the last one is the leader. And I think this one sometimes can actually be overlooked a little bit because it yep, is so. so simple. Like, are you the leader mm-hmm. of the channel? Are there a few leaders? You know, maybe you got to clarify that, but... I do think there's a little bit more underneath the surface with that as far as why, why is this important? Um, Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll ask you guys, why is this important? I think of actually one consultation, uh, Ingrid and I were in and uh, the the creators, even on the banner themselves too, there was like 15 of them. And we're like, we don't know who to look for at this channel. Like (laughs) who are we coming back to? Um, I think a lot of people overlook the idea of like them being like the face of the channel when it comes even on, on their icon. I'm not saying you have to, but even like the channel icon itself. Sometimes seeing that face there or seeing you on the banner, it's like, I want to know who I'm supposed to be looking through as the authority. Um, even one channel that I worked with, you know, them lacking a bit of community content. I said, I don't know who is in charge of the channel. I don't know who, any of your names, like there's a lot that's missing here to kind of give me direction of why I should trust a single person. And without having that clarity, it's hard to build trust with, with your audience if I don't know who I'm supposed to be directing that trust towards. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I'm curious what you guys think. What do you do like when your leader is no longer in the content? I feel actually, this is a really I, good question. I've done well. It's, it's hard though. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious what you guys would say. I would actually treat this similarly to like if you're pivoting the channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so maybe you're pivoting to a slightly different like value proposition of what this channel is about. I would just encourage like lean into it, like be communicative as far as what direction you're going. If yeah. it's a new leader of the channel, I'd really lean into and, and you could do it in a, in a way that's not so like, hi, I'm the new leader of the channel. You know, you could do it in a way that makes more sense, but maybe you could even start integrating some of these primal branding elements. What's the creation story of the new leader? Yeah. Um, you know, how, how do you kind of grow that connection with the new leader of the channel more quickly? Yeah, there's a channel that I watch called Hacksmith and they're a bigger channels well too. Mm. And for years, he, yeah, he's been like the leader of the channel, but over the years, slowly slipping in other people from who work mm-hmm. with them or, or his employees for us to build rapport with and just get used to the idea of seeing that person so that it's come to the day now too for him for various reasons he hasn't been in every single video for personal reasons that it hasn't been overly jarring for the audience because they already recognize this one person's build rapport with it they still know he's leader of the channel but they do recognize him as part of now like that problem of branding right different icons him as well well i mean we're a perfect case in point true true right yeah <laughs> you know um tim's not in a lot of the content anymore just because he's working in lots of different other facets of the business uh he's still a very much a part of the company mm-hmm. um and we're gonna drag him back don't you worry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry i've told him i said you don't get to quit 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things. There has to be a leader on the channel and you it's OK to have co-leaders. But like you kind of referred to this, Blake, can you have too many? Like what's an ideal number? I don't know what the ideal number would be. I'd say ideally, I would think no more than like three to five. I think I think five is like absolutely Ooh, I'll push back. me. Okay, I would say three at most. <laughs> three for me at most. I, I say five for a bit of grace, as long as we have like one clear. Because I've seen that from the channels where they have a few other people and it's worked. Yeah, um, yeah. But, Do perfect, right? Yeah, that's who came to mind for me. My question would be: Yeah, if you have five, are all five in every video, or is it one I of the five so. in each video? Because that could affect things well, too. Well, look at Dude Perfect. You have one clear leader yeah. on the channel, right? Yep. Um, and then you have co-leaders. It doesn't mean that, you know, not everybody's important, but you can only really have one person lead the charge. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's just, it's a committee. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think maybe even just to piggyback on that, I think it's important that you just said one person, because I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of creators that we work with who, you know, maybe it's a business, maybe it was a business first who now sure. has a YouTube channel and you see a lot. And I see this too with just individual creators. There's some almost need to want to use more like we language, like we yeah. here at mm -hmm. video creators believe that this, this, and this. And it, I almost feel like that waters down the impact that primal branding can have a little bit when it's sort of this we language and less of like a like I believe X like as a human, especially because YouTube is such a relational platform. Like if you can relate to the the leader of that company, even if it's a huge company, but you know, you can really relate to that person as a human being, this mm -hmm. stuff just goes so much further than sort of that like corporate speak, like the the big kind of big picture this corporation believes X, X, and X sort of thing. The tangible things that people will see is immediately you'll probably see your subscribers go up. You're going to start to establish connections. And that's going to also ignite a new passion in you for your channel and your content. But only if you apply the primal branding elements to your channel, that's when you're going to actually be able to take your audience from passive viewers to diehard fans. Yeah, each of us on the team have worked with tons of creators in consultations, just really kind of taking action to implement some of this stuff into your content. And we love it. I mean, clearly we're passionate about the effects that this can have um, for your channel long term. So if you find yourself just wanting a little bit of extra help, we'd love to hear your story, help you implement some of this stuff into your content. So go ahead and visit videocreators.com slash consulting and we'll see you there. Every week, we love to leave you with a power tip, something new that YouTube's doing or something, some information about things we can utilize on the platform. And this week, I want to talk a bit about something called prominent links. So you might see this change actually today, actually happening on your platform. Um, underneath even your, you know, you see your icon, your name, a little bit about your about section. And underneath that, you can now add up to 14 links if you click on that of other social medias you want to send your, your audience to. Uh, and you can really customize, you know, putting different titles, adding favorite cons for, for glanceability. Um, but it's a cool way to kind of, you know, like Linktree was, this is the, the same thing for YouTube to kind of add more of your Instagram, TikTok, wherever it may be to kind of combine those platforms for your audience. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, well, actually, you know what you could even add there is if you were selling a course, you could add all sorts True. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Although I wouldn't add too many, right? Yeah, I think 14 is excessive, but... Uh, 14 is excessive. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even name that many social media platforms, but... Well, think about think about it. Well, it's not even just that. I th it's, mm -hmm. it's really links to anything, you know, maybe you have a brand deal, right? you know, or, or you have a link or something there. But um, I think of Donald Miller, if you confuse, you lose, is a good is a good rule of thumb here. But I love that we have possibilities and this is great. That's a definitely, definitely a cool power tip. I love that. Thanks for listening to another Video Creators Podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye.